On February 24th, 1989, United Airlines Flight 811 took off from Honolulu, bound for Sydney. What began as a routine flight would soon turn into one of aviation's most terrifying ordeals. A catastrophic cargo door failure led to explosive decompression, tearing the aircraft apart mid-flight. This is the story of survival, courage and loss. It's a typical evening at Los Angeles International Airport. Passengers bustle through the terminal, eager to begin their journeys. Among them, travelers prepare to board United Airlines Flight 811, destined for Sydney, Australia, with layovers in Honolulu and Auckland. At 10 p.m., Flight 811 departs from Los Angeles International Airport. The aircraft, a Boeing 747-122, registered N4713U. At 1 a.m., Flight 811 lands at Honolulu International Airport for a scheduled layover. Passengers disembark briefly, stretching their legs, while crew members perform routine checks. Starting in Honolulu, Flight 811 was under Captain David M. Cronin, age 59. At the time of the accident, Cronin had logged around 28,000 flight hours, including roughly 1,600 hours in Boeing 747 aircraft. Flight 811 was Cronin's penultimate scheduled flight before his mandatory retirement. The remaining flight crew consisted of First Officer Gregory Allen Al Slader, 48, and Flight Engineer Randall Mark Thomas, 46, and 15 flight attendants. The First Officer and Flight Engineer had logged 14,500 flight hours and 20,000 flight hours, respectively. After a brief stop, Flight 811 is ready to continue its journey.
1.52 a.m., the aircraft takes off from Honolulu, bound for Auckland and then Sydney. As flight 811 ascends through 22,000 feet, the seatbelt sign remains illuminated due to anticipated turbulence. Passengers adjust their seatbelts, settling in for the ride. Suddenly, a loud thump shakes the aircraft. The forward cargo door has failed, causing explosive decompression. A massive hole appears in the fuselage, and several rows of seats are torn away, along with nine passengers. The cabin erupts into chaos. Flight attendants struggle to maintain control as passengers scream some witnessing the horror of seats and people being sucked out into the night sky. In the cockpit, Captain David Cronin, First Officer Gregory Slader and Flight Engineer Randall Thomas assess the situation. The loss of the cargo door has compromised the aircraft's integrity. They prepare for an emergency return to Honolulu. The aircraft begins a rapid descent to reach breathable air. The crew declares an emergency, informing air traffic control of their situation. Flight attendants move through the cabin, assessing damage. The right side of the fuselage is missing, exposing the night sky. Passengers cling to their seats, some in shock, others praying. Debris from the decompression has damaged engines three and four. Flames flicker from the right wing as the crew works to shut down the affected engines. With limited power, the aircraft turns back toward Honolulu. The crew coordinates with emergency services, preparing for a challenging landing. The aircraft lines up for an emergency landing. Flaps extend partially compensating for damage as the runway lights grow nearer. The Boeing 747 touches down, the damaged fuselage groaning under the stress. Emergency vehicles line the runway, ready for any eventuality. Passengers and crew evacuate swiftly. Despite the chaos, all 346 souls aboard are accounted for, though nine are tragically lost to the sea. Investigators swarm the aircraft, documenting damage. The cause? A catastrophic failure of the cargo door's locking mechanism, leading to explosive decompression. A memorial service honours the nine passengers lost. Anthony and Barbara Fallon, 
Harry and Susan Craig, Rose Harley, Mary T. Handley, Lee Campbell and Dr. Birch.